Welcome back to another edition of Flight Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to tie another minnow pattern and this is going to be a an appetizer. The hook that I have in the vise, this is a size 6 and it is 3 extra long streamer hook. It's only you know an inch and a half and we're going to leave this one unweighted. You can go ahead and wrap any size uh, lead free wire or lead wire on there that you want. Here I made a couple of them and I made them with 35 thousandths lead free wire. The thread you can use black. I'm going to use this uh, Danville 70 denier this is gray. I'll just get a marker and make the head black at the end. That we're going to go ahead and put a base of thread down. And it doesn't even have to be really touch and turns. You can kind of give it a couple open and then move the thread back. When you get to the end here, then you want to keep them tighter. And we'll break that off. Now, for the tail, we're going to use... It, it suggests orange, but I'm going to use red, yellow, and green. And I'm going to put the three of them together. And here we have the red, yellow, and green together. You can go ahead and kind of pull them out to the 90 degree. But you want to go grab them and take them all at once. The red, yellow, and green. And I got one long one there. We're going to put that on for the tail. And there you go. Your tail could go just beyond the bend of the, of the hook. Take a loose loop and then bring it straight up. And that will keep everything on top. And it won't ro it won't uh, rotate around your your shank if you pull it straight up or straight down, but straight up seems to work a little bit better. Now I'm going to add a rib, and our rib is going to be oval silver tinsel. You can use flat silver tinsel if you don't have the oval. And we're going to tie that in right there. And put that in the material clip. Now I'm going to take white chenille. And I'm going to use ultra chenille. And I'll pull off seven or eight inches, I guess. Might actually get two of them out of that much. Then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to leave the tag end long so that I have a level body. And that's about good. We'll secure it at the back with several wraps and then we can make a quick wrap towards the front. And then put a few extra wraps in the front. Now we can take our chenille and wrap that and you want to wrap that pretty tight and you'll know if you if you got it secured enough right from the first wrap because if you didn't wrap it tight enough it's going to rotate on you and we'll go ahead and secure this And we'll trim off that excess. Push that thread away with your finger. And I'm going to give it a few extra wraps right there. Now I'm going to take that rib. I'm going to counter wrap. That's the opposite direction I put the chenille on. And we're going to wrap this pretty tight too.
and you'll know if you wrapped it tight enough when you start fishing it and the, and the uh, rib comes off. And then when you counter wrap, now you got to hold that tight and you got to give this several wraps to make sure that it's not going to unravel on you. There's about four there. We'll give it another one. Make that five. Now I'm going to keep holding it tight. And I can give it a couple more. Now I can remove this. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the underwing on. And the underwing is going to be white marabou. And this is just a uh, strung saddle hackle. You can see how soft it is. But I'm going to take this. And I'm just going to take this marabou from the bottom of it. And that's going to be plenty long. Peel it a little bit. Fold it over. Peel it a little bit. Fold it over. And then you can pull that off. And now that piece. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and tie this in. It's going to give you a lot of movement. And this, this fly was designed for fishing lakes and reservoirs so there we go give it the loose loop there we go we secure that in there and now before I go ahead and put the overwing on I'm gonna put the throat on yep one second if you have it's a little bit sticking together I have a small eyebrow brush here and that'll take care of the marabou help it help it unruly stuff there we go now I'm going to take the same combination the yellow red and green and here now that I have a piece of stem sticking out I could put all three together right there and then you want to take try to get equal amounts of each but you can pull them all off at the same time and they could be mixed don't worry if they're not I mean they could be mixed and we're gonna tie them in first I'm going to measure it and they, they're right to the to point of the hook there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. Tie them in. Got a nice throat there. Just going to make a nice chubby looking minnow or chubby looking fish for the lake. Now we want to take mallard flank, and this is just natural, plain mallard flank. And I'm going to take actually two bunches, because you don't see this as well. So I'm going to put one bunch on each side of that. Just hold them there to the same length. And we'll take the second bunch. And these bunches actually should be a little bit on the fat side. We're going to tie these on this side because you're only using the tips. And they get thinner as they go to the tips. So you need a good amount of uh, feather there. And there we go. Give it a little color on the belly. And then we can trim this off. I left it, I, I didn't trim it that before I put it on because there's plenty there to help me uh, trim it while it is on. Now we're going to go ahead and turn that over. And now we're going to top this off with gray squirrel we don't need a lot smaller amount is fine I'm 
you know, maybe the size of a pencil tip. Not a sharp one. And we'll separate those. Pull out them small ones there. And we don't want to make this as long as that. We're going to make that a little bit shorter. I'm going to measure it, and then I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it a bit at an angle. That cut wasn't great, but we're going to secure this. Put a couple of wraps on there. It doesn't even have to be tight yet. But now, before you go and go ahead and wrap it, put either head cement and let it soak in, or go ahead and give it a little drop of super glue, which that's what I'm going to do here. Then the thread will actually push the glue in inside. And this is the Loctite gel super glue. You have some. It doesn't dry as fast. You have you have a little bit of working time with it. <clears throat> now I can actually even go ahead and color my thread. Turn that black. I've used this gray because I've had this gray thread for a long time. And I kind of want to use it up. And being that I, we kind of cut it at a taper and put it in there at a bit of a taper, you're going to secure it a little better. Yep, I'm into the gray again. I'll just color it after I get the head done. But you get the idea. And we're going to take this back down and we'll put the whip finish. Put the Take the whip finisher, put the hook over the thread, around the camel hump, bring it back. Invert it. There's your X. Slide that down to the hook shank. Three to six turns. Tighten that up, but don't pull too tight. Go ahead and trim that off. Take now. I'm going to take the the marker and just color that. Just color that uh, black, and I can feel the the super glue is, is has cured and get that all the way around if you're a little more than a beginner you could go ahead and put eye, eyes on it now we'll take our head cement And put a good coat of head cement on there. Let that soak in. You can see that marker came off on it a little bit. Not a big deal. And here we have the appetizer. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. If you do subscribe, please hit the notify button so you won't miss any of my videos. Please visit my sponsors and let them know that I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase any flies from me, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it there, just send me a message on Etsy and I'll get back to you and we'll figure out what you're looking for. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.